As U.S. President Donald Trump's tour of Asia ended, his message was resounding. I am always going to put America first, the same way that I expect all of you in this room to put your countries first. U.S. trade policy is diverging from the rest of the world, but a new shift in global growth patterns between Asia and Europe is also beginning to show. China's growing pains have been put under the spotlight again this week, with its trio of data-raising concerns of a further cooling economy. Investment grew 7.3 percent in the January to October period, but showed a dip from September's figures. Industrial output expanded 6.2 percent compared to the 6.6 percent increase in September. And retail sales grew 10 percent, but also came in weaker than the previous month's readings. Despite indications that the country's growth is starting to show signs of fatigue, China is sticking to its guns, choosing to focus on quality over speed. Whether it's in terms of supply, demand, or market expectations, we can say that it's entirely possible to maintain steady growth next year. Now, when it comes to the meaning of this steady growth, the development of China's economy has already shifted from a past stage of high-speed growth to a stage of high-quality development. While China continues to pursue a balancing act, the Eurozone economy is revving up its engines. The third quarter GDP grew 2.5 percent year-on-year. The growth was powered by Germany, which is looking to seal its status as the bloc's juggernaut. Data released on Tuesday show the country grew about 0.8 percent on the quarter a beat on its second quarter reading. Italy, which is typically seen as a laggard in the region, is starting to show signs of revival, beating expectations with a 0.5 percent raise in quarterly growth. And the EU finance chief is bullish about the rosy outlook. This year, 2017, is on a really good track to be the first in 10 years during which all countries of the European Union, without exception, will observe economic growth. And 2018 looks set to be a year of widespread growth for all member states. Outside the Eurozone, Britain is bracing for an economic slowdown to get worse as it departs the EU. With the budget plan announcement just around the corner, British Finance Minister Philip Hammond is facing pressure to prop up the economy while softening the impact of Brexit. The country is growing at half the rate of Germany, and inflation is at the highest in five years. Like the Chinese policymakers, Hammond is on thin ice with planning an economic turnaround, but the outcome could cost him his job. Stacey Bivens, TRT World. Now, David Madden is a market analyst at CMC Markets, and he joins us now from London. Welcome back to Money Talks, David. So we've got a diverging picture. We've got growth in emerging Asia looking like it's uh, slowing slightly, Europe picking up steam. If you're a global investor with a global portfolio, how do you play this story? Well, some of the interesting numbers we've, we've seen out of China and also the Eurozone today point that uh, China's economy is going from, say, a fifth gear, which it was in uh, a couple of years ago, and it's now making a, um, a slow and steady uh, move lower into, say, third or fourth gear. But the economy is still doing exceptionally well. China is on track to achieve its target of 6.5% growth this year, whereas the Eurozone is obviously picking up uh, the latest Eurozone uh, GDP numbers show that, that the economy grew by 2.5%, which is obviously must be taken in context. Five or six years ago, the Eurozone was quite literally in the doldrums. Uh, so we had the Eurozone debt crisis raging. Thankfully, that's behind us now. So these growth figures from both countries must be taken in respect of, say, their, their own performance over the last five or seven years. In relation to what do we do in, if you're a global investor, you may want to rethink um, some long positions you have if you, if you were very much exposed to the Far East. For example, Standard Chartered and HSBC are very much de dependent on, uh, on growth in emerging markets, uh, including China. And conversely, if you were looking to potentially grow, uh, potentially uh, we could see additional growth mm. uh, in the Eurozone. It wasn't that long ago um, that we had a record high in the German DAX and the CAC 40 in France. And seeing as Mario Draghi, the, ch the head of the ECB, 
has stated that he's concerned about low inflation in the region and he's willing to use additional stimulus if it's necessary. We could always see uh, additional QE being pumped through the eurozone and in turn propping up asset prices. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought up the EU and the ECB because, I mean, a lot of what's driving the EU's economy right now is all of that excess liquidity sloshing around. But at the same time, the ECB is looking like it's going to trim back some of that uh, liquidity and pull back some of those uh, uh, billions of dollars that it's pumping into the economy every month. Um, how is the economy going to respond uh, as that QE gets pulled back? Are we going to see some of that growth taper off as well? That's quite possibly going to be the case, uh, bearing in mind the growth figures that we saw from the, from the Eurozone were for the third quarter. And if you cast your mind back, the euro was in a much weaker shape at the beginning and the middle of 2017. So a lot of the solid economic growth figures uh, across all the various different economic indicators, construction, services, manufacturing, industrial production, and so on and so forth, were largely taken from an era when the euro was in a far weaker position. The euro has done quite well versus the US dollar and the British pound in recent months. And with that, we're going to see a slight trickle down impact into the growth. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, we are talking low si single digit figures here for the eurozone growth. So we could see a slight trimming um, of the growth rate while the euro, while the impact of the strong euro uh, works its way down into the economic indicators. David, so when you look around the world right now, where do you see the greatest opportunities? Well, given that the, Europe, the European Central Bank uh, still have a QE policy in place, which they're going to have until the end of September 2018, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's even extended beyond that again, perhaps with an even lower size in terms of its monthly bond buying. But given that the Eurozone is finally kind of getting out of the doldrums mm -hmm. and, the QE, and the QE has been slowly phased right. out, I think the growth is going to continue from the oh. Eurozone from here. OK. David Madden in CMC Markets in London. Thank you very much.